Uh, hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at a very interesting problem. Uh, we have a sphere, a three-dimensional object, right? And inside that sphere, there's a cavity. So there's kind of material that's been removed. Uh, this sphere is non-conducting and there is charge that is uniformly spread out throughout the volume of this sphere. Inside the cavity, there is no charge. So my question is, how would you find the electric field at any point inside that cavity? So you imagine here I have a point at some arbitrary location, it could be anywhere, and how would I find the electric field produced by all of these charges in that green shaded area? Right? So how would you set this problem up? This looks really, really complicated if I just asked this question, but I'm going to show you how you can actually apply Gauss's law in order to solve this problem, and actually, it really isn't that bad. All right, like with all my videos, uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Consider subscribing to my channel, it's the best way to support Physics Ninja. All right, let's get started. All right, one of the keys to solving a very complicated problem like this one is to first consider the simple case. So let me first by just reminding ourselves how do you solve a simple case where it's uniformly charged, the charge density is given by the total charge divided by the total volume. So here we have a sphere, and the sphere has a radius big R, and I want to apply Gauss's law to find the field inside that sphere. So Gauss's law says that the integral of E dot dA, that's over a closed surface, is equal to how much charge is inside my closed surface divided by epsilon zero. Now my goal is to find the field inside, so I would draw a Gaussian surface, and I'll just show it here. Just sketch that quickly. This uh, Gaussian surface has a radius little r. All right, so how do I apply this? Well, again, if you were going to draw the electric field at any point inside, uh, on this Gaussian surface, the electric field would be pointing away if this object is positively charged. Now, because of this symmetry, what this does is it really simplifies the left-hand side here of Gauss's law. Because E is has a constant magnitude uh, everywhere. So that means you could simply take it out of this integral, and you're left with the integral over a closed surface of dA. That is simply the total area of this sphere. All right, what about this left, uh, right hand side of Gauss's law? It says Q inside, it's how much charge is inside this volume divided by a constant epsilon zero. So the charge inside, again, all you have to do now is integrate over the volume of the charge density over that volume, okay, divided by epsilon zero. So um, let's look at both sides again. So uh, the left-hand side simplifies. The integral of the area here of this closed surface gives me 4 pi little r squared. That's the area of this surface of the sphere. All right, what about the right-hand side? Again, this uh, numerator here simply boils down to, again, the density is constant. I can take it out of the integral, and I'm left with integrating the total volume of the sphere. Total volume of the sphere is 4 thirds pi and we're looking at a sphere with a little radius, so it becomes 4 pi r cube divided by epsilon zero. There are numerous terms now that can be simplified from this expression. Uh, we have 4 pi, 4 pi. Look at, we have radius squared, we have radius cube. I'm left with just one value of r. Okay, so at the end I have that the total magnitude of that electric field um, is the density. I still have a three left over, epsilon zero. I still have one value of r. That is the magnitude. If I wanted to write it as a vector, what you can do is just write e, and then I can add a vector r like this. Okay, so that tells me that the field is radially pointing away from the center of the sphere. Okay, so we're gonna use this result now in order to find the field of a much more complicated object. Okay, the object I have here above, the object with the cavity inside. Now let me show you the trick on how to do that. All right, the second key to finding the field anywhere inside this cavity, all right, let's call that E inside, or E total, is to use the principle of superposition. All right, let's think about, from an electrical charge standpoint, how can we create an object like this that has a charge density rho that is uniform everywhere in the green shaded area and is zero inside this white, sh white area? Well, 
This object can be made by considering a total sphere which has the same charge density as the first one, and if I add to it something with an opposite charge density. So at the end, if I put one object over the other, it is going to cancel the charge in such a way that there is no charge inside this white circle over here on the left-hand side. So at the end, if you consider it, so our total electric field at any point, I would write it as a vector, and I would write it as the field due to this positively charged object, right, the full sphere. And to it, I would add the field produced by this negatively charged object I'll call E negative. This is the field due to a small sphere with a negative uniform charge density applied over its volume. Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. And what we are going to end up doing is we're going to use the result from the previous case. We're going to use Gauss's law for this guy, and we're going to use Gauss's law for this guy in order to find the total electric field. So let's go on the next page and start putting things together. All right, I'm considering an arbitrary point anywhere inside this cavity. Okay, now this point I could define as a certain distance away from the big sphere or a certain distance away from the small sphere. And I'm going to use that uh, for the different vectors that I'm considering. So again, we have to use superposition to solve this, right? So we're considering, we're going to label E positive as the field due to a full sphere, green sphere, that has a uniform charge density positive rho. And to that, we have to add the field due to a negatively charged sphere. It's smaller, but it has the same charge density. All right, and at the end, our total field has to be the vector sum of both of those. So let's go ahead and draw those vectors. So how would E positive look? Well, again, it is a sphere produced by this giant uh, green sphere. So it should point away from it in this direction. This would be E positive. Again, it points along the radial direction. All right, and what about the field produced by the negative charge density? Okay, well, that field should point toward the center of that sphere because it is a negatively charged object. So this vector here should look like this, okay, pointing toward it. Now, I just saw in the first part of this video, how do you find the magnitudes of each one of these? Again, they're just uniformly charged spheres, so you should be able to just write it down. So that vector E positive, uh, we can write exactly as I did in that previous case, multiplied by the vector R. Remember, it's pointing radially away from the big sphere center. Uh, e minus is pointing toward Okay, and that one looks a little bit different. Same charge density, same factors over here, 3 epsilon 0. Now the vector, you got to be a little bit careful, right? It points toward which, which sphere? It points toward the center of the little sphere. I've defined that vector as R1. All right, these are not the same, right? Clearly, they're in different directions. So we have to now look at this uh, geometrical figure right here, and we're going to link both of these vectors together, all right? There has to be a link here between them. And the way that you can do that now is using this additional vector, right? Which goes from the center all the way to the edge. So I'm gonna write down a relationship and we'll make sure it makes sense in a minute. So the link between both of them, you can write down the vector R1, which goes from here to there, right? From the center of the small sphere to the point of observation. I can write that down as minus A times J Okay, A is the magnitude, that's the radius of the small sphere, and it's pointing down, so that's this red vector, plus the vector R. R goes from the center of the big sphere all the way to the point of observation. All right, if you understand this equation right here, let me highlight that because this is an important one. Make sure you do. It's going to allow us to find the total electric field and simplify this notation a little bit. All right, let's go to the last page and finish this problem off. All right, so to find the total field, we just apply the definition. Our total field inside that cavity. Again, it's that highlighted uh, equation right here. So E positive is rho divided by 3 epsilon 0 multiplied by the vector R and plus the field due to the negatively charged smaller sphere. All right, and this is the vector R1. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to take our definition of R1 and substitute it in here. So actually, what, let me just get rid of R1 right here and replace it with this second term. 
This is minus a multiplied by j plus the vector r. Okay, now we have to do a little bit of algebra. Okay, you can see here that this first term is going to be the exact opposite, right? If you multiply this through to both of these vectors, you see that the second term is going to look exactly the same except it has this negative sign in the front. So this here is going to cancel with this guy. And what you're left with, the remarkable result that you are left with is that this total field inside the cavity ends up being just multiplying this, uh, this term here. See the negative signs cancel out. So you're left with rho. You're left with the radius of that small sphere divided by three epsilon zero. And the direction of that field, look what it is. It's in the J direction. So what does this all mean? Let me just highlight this. It's actually a remarkable result. First of all, it doesn't matter where the point P is. These are all constant terms. That field vector anywhere inside this cavity, let me make it in blue, right, is in the positive direction. This is the total field anywhere inside this cavity. I get a total electric field that is pointing up and the magnitude is given by this result. There is no dependence. Whether the field is here, on this side, in the middle, it really doesn't matter, okay? You get the same magnitude and the direction is the same. Okay, it's kind of a nice problem. It's not an obvious problem. And it's a nice application of using Gauss's law and simplifying a very complicated object into two simpler objects that we know the result to. All right, hopefully you've learned something from this video, okay? Uh, whenever there's a hole inside an object, that is a pretty complicated calculation. There's typically a simplification that can be made in order to simplify the problem. All right, thanks for watching, folks.